to the pre-production production panel. My name is Beth Bravant with Film Prize Junior. I've been one of your mentors. I'm sure you know who I am. So thank you all for joining us. Um, first to filmmakers, congratulations. It is a huge task to do what you just did. If you caught the last panel, you heard some statistics, 2% of those that co start the process complete. So congratulations, right out of the gate. <laughs> applause to our filmmakers. I have a little bit of housekeeping and just general notes for you. First off, I would love to thank all of the sponsors to make this possible. Um, there is a long list, and I'm hopefully not going to uh, neglect any of them. If I do, I apologize out of the gate, but it's, a, it's really important that our sponsors are here in, in person and, and their financial donations. You will meet and can meet some sponsors today. Um, but right off the bat, Louisiana Economic Development, the Noel Foundation, the Monteleone Family Foundation, the Louisiana Film and Entertainment Association, Shreveport Regional Arts, Sandy and Jeffrey Kallenberg, the Community Foundation, Jay Wineland Group Benefits, Heidi and Gregory Kallenberg, thank you so much for sponsoring this wonderful event. Applause for you. I'm gonna have the panelists introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their experience in film. So Melissa, let's start with you and head on over. Hi, I am Melissa Munns. I do video in pretty much all facets of my life. I'm employed with a local company that has kind of a national pool with different brands as a video producer and marketing communication specialist. I also co-own a business with my husband and we do spokesperson videos, uh, website videos for different companies all over the world. And of course, Film Prize is our favorite go-to thing we've done Film Prize since I think 2017, and we've gotten in the top 20, and last year got a grant. So, awesome. Yay. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Is it no? Still good morning, I believe. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Brent Ladden with YPE, Young Professionals Entertainment. Uh, we do media marketing here in the area, but lots of video production. So, pretty much anything video uh, we do here in the area and we've done just across the country a lot of different cool projects from television shows documentaries um, of course promotional videos um, testimonials so just you, you name it video wise we've uh, done it so I'm excited to be here um, uh, film prize I love it so I've, I've loved I was one of the judges years ago for um, film prize junior so I'm really excited about just uh, shedding some knowledge today and learning because these these two right here know everything so I'm, I'm really here to learn just like you all in the audience Woo. Uh, hi, I'm Clint McCommon. I'm with uh, Fairfield Studios. We also do uh, video marketing as our main thing. My uh, big joke, I always tell people, that's what I do. I say, you know, when you're watching the YouTube, you don't watch this really cool video and you have to skip an ad beforehand. <laughs> that's us to the ads you skip. And if we don't skip it, we did a good job. That's how I can say it. I have a lot of, we do a lot of the same as they do. Like the experience with uh, feature documentaries, worked a lot of television. Um, I don't have as much feature film exposure, but the people I work with do, so I learn a lot from them. And it's been it's been fun watching the films this this year for Film Prize. My first time judging. I'm really happy they asked me to help out with that. Thanks for coming, Clint. So we're going to be covering pre-production and production. And in my personal opinion, pre-production may be the most important component of making a film after story. Um, I definitely want you to weigh in on your thoughts around that, but let's start with uh, Melissa. So why don't you tell us why is pre-production important? Well, pre-production is pretty much everything. It's <laughs> scheduling everything out that you need to do, getting in contact with the right people, uh, securing your locations, and making sure that you have a functional cast and crew that is reliable. You don't need anybody backing out on you in the last second. So yeah, I mean, you just need to make sure you have all your ducks in a row so that everything goes smoothly the day of. All right, Brent, what do you think? Um, yeah, echo, echoing off of what she said, I mean, pre-production is everything. Uh, the older I get, the more I, more and more I'm a planner. So pre-production, that's that planning time. Um, and then also when it comes down to budgeting, uh, you can save a lot of money when you really prepare. Uh, because you'll have everything written out, you'll know location. So it really 
does does a lot and then it also even helps um in a sense it helps open up more creativity because you're really outlining everything that you you're doing and then sometimes you're like okay well we probably can cut that out that may not work logistically or budget wise so it's so many important things that happen in pre-production um and for a lot of projects i'm blessed to be on the on the more executive end so that's very important for us to know exactly where the money is going where the time where the energy is going and Brent, you bring up a really good point about locations and being able to save money if you plan early with your locations. Um, Clint, could you talk a little bit about, and specifically for student filmmakers, how can they go about securing locations? Well, that is really a fun question. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know people who have been chased off sets by the police because they went there without permission, so don't do that, first of all. <laughs> um, but finding a location can make or break the, the scene you're trying to create. Um, having good connections always helps. Ask, and I'll never be afraid to ask. The worst thing people do is say no. So if you want to shoot in the Regions Bank lobby, go find out who's in charge of the Regions Bank or have your parents find out and see if they'll say, let you do it. And find, it might be, yeah, you can. It has to be Sunday morning at 8 a.m., but it does, you know, and then Definitely, you know, you can't at our stage and like filmmaking and filmmaking junior, you can't go build the the giant sets they do for Pirates of the Caribbean. But you know, you can find a ways to fake it um, and just keep that in your in your back of your mind is how ca how can I make this work with the limited resources I have? Um, and it might be filming in your backyard and building you know little backdrops or or like you said, just don't be afraid to ask and hope for good news. And if I might add, Shreveport is a fantastic place for mm. people letting you use their locations. They're very friendly about that here. If you go to places like LA, they're very strict. They're tired of it. You know, it's inundated. But here, people are very friendly. They, they will help you out. And I would even add, too, that for students, who doesn't want to help a student, right? A, yeah. a high school student. If they can, they will. But you need to ask and you need to be polite. Yep. Uh, and I, yep, I did that this weekend. There's a film shooting for a kid's school for the main film prize. It's a film camp, and I gave them you know, all kinds of help that I wouldn't normally give you know, a, a, a professional client because it is for learning. Brent, would you talk a little bit too more about what happens in pre-production? So we've isolated locations. Yes. We've talked about budget just a little bit. But if you could elaborate on what other components happen during pre-production. Yes. So one of the biggest uh, components, um, we're here talking about production. So it's getting your shot list together. It's recognizing how you want to shoot those certain shots. Um, who all do you need on set for certain shots? Of course, we talked about location, but this really uh, brings on the time to where you can also connect the entire team together. So if you're a writer, you've probably been a little bit more isolated or like, like the panel before, maybe a small group of writers, but now you're actually talking to your director. You're talking to your DP with your director of photography. You're talking to other producers. You're, you're talking to the audio guy. So you're really um, building that team and seeing what's the best, what's the efficient way, but also ways to really um, push out the vision. So uh, storyboarding, um, you're, you're looking over the script again to make sure it matches with the talent. You're actually hiring the talent. Um, you're looking at, you know, maybe this is the time where you're doing auditions. You got the script down. You know uh, what type of roles you want. But now it's time to say, hey, look, we want to see who's going to be able to play in this part and fit in this part. So uh, that's a little bit. But I could probably go on 10 or 15 minutes about the keep entire. Going. No, but free, free, free this is important stuff. So keep going. Yeah, what else? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and let me I do it this. Oh, he has my phone. But <laughs> um, because we're working on some projects now. So I, I'm a big list person. So I have a whole list in my phone. G guys, what else am I missing? We talked about doing, getting the talent mm -hmm. um, shot list scout scout yes yes yeah talked about um, scouting um, as well so it's just it's, it's so many so so many things and I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm missing something because my yeah. mind works like that but um, well in general like if you're doing let's say a fight scene in a movie you, you want to rehearse that yes so that's yes. a part of uh, pre-production too yes yes it's yes important. Yeah really important yeah. it's really about coalescing your team and I know there's a couple directors here because I, I recognize you so as a director it is about connecting with your people that will help realize your vision um, so when a director I, I do want to talk a little bit about storyboarding if we could yes, yes. Um, because I think that that's one thing as a young director that you may be intimidated to deal with can you talk a little bit about, and we'll just start with Clint and go down the right, talk a little bit about storyboarding and what it is and why it may be important. Well, there's, there's many ways to do storyboarding. 
Everything from drawing little stick figures on a, on a plain piece of paper because you're not a good artist, like I, like <laughs> the, my, my situation, to hiring someone to draw out your visuals, tell them what you want to do. Uh, one of the ways that we storyboard with Fairfield, like we go, we had an opportunity to be on location for our clients, is you, you already have a phone in your pocket with your cell phone. And so have a person stand in the scene, take the photo, and then paste those photo, photos out and or take a photo of the scene, of the backdrop, and draw in the characters and, and have the little arrows. I want the camera to zoom in on this person. And you can hand write instructions. But the storyboard is basically you're doing a pre-visualization of what you're going to shoot for real on the day of. And the more of that you do through rehearsals and doing scouting, the more you have a feel for what's going to happen, the more you communicate to your team your vision so they know what you're going for versus showing up and you just tell them everything to do. They might actually, they, your team will help you do better because they, they can they, they'll see things a different way they know what you want and they'll try, they'll try to help you and you might be so busy doing all these other things that you forget the big picture so that's that's my philosophy on it you know the more you can just previs what you're going to do on the on the days of shooting the more you're going to help find those pitfalls that might hurt you yeah definitely and I mean echoing all of that and dittoing all of that and uh, one of my biggest things is when you get ready to produce the film pre-production also reduces that stress yeah. so really having the storyboard knowing what type of angles I mean you already have a road map for success with your film so um, I mean it really is going to reduce because it's going to be stressful anyway sometimes creative processes are, are stressful especially producing and there might be a technical problem but at least you already know what type of shot you want and how you want it want everything to go Right, and, and part of that is also taking that storyboard, sitting down with your crew, sitting down with your DP, making sure that it actually works, because I have done the storyboarding for a past film, and we got on set, and it just didn't go to plan. I mean, what I had written down wasn't quite what worked for the space we were in. So it's good to kind of apply that to a real world scenario before you shoot and make sure that it's all good, and then make any modifications up front before the day of the shoot. Melissa, you bring up a huge point. I want everyone to listen to that. So in pre-production, you're planning for things to go right and you're planning for things to go wrong. So Melissa, if you could continue that thought, what about that pre-production process enables you to act on your feet if things go wrong? Well, I mean, basically having that open line of communication with your crew, I mean, in the situation I was talking about, like, we actually had a location change the day of. And so we had to work with this tiny little space when we were expecting the lights to be moved back. Now we've got shadows on the walls. We had this whole different scenario. So first of all, with the pre-production process, make don't go off a chance that's what we did we're like oh yeah that upstairs of this building that we run out is is open it was closed it was locked we didn't have anybody who could open it up for us so then we had to to modify on the spot so you have to find out who owns the building make sure it's going to be open clear everything ahead of time and yeah i mean just basically going through everything with your crew and making sure ahead of time is this going to work or might we run into issues here that's a great point. It allows you to be nimble. Mm -hmm. If you have planned well, when things go wrong, you know how to recalibrate quickly. Yes. Brent, your thoughts? Yes. Um, things normally go wrong or something may go out of whack. That's just a part of life, but definitely a part of production. Uh, but I mean, I, just echoing, dittoing all of, all of what uh, she said, um, that's just really going to help to streamline everything just in case. And then let's just say, you know, location change does happen. You still know what shots you need to get. And then if you, if you need to make adjustments, you'll even have some type of thing already in place to make adjustments from. So it just helps so much to have all of those things planned out. Final thoughts, Clint, pre-production. Uh, wow, they say so much already. I'm 100% I'm with what they're saying because I've gone through the same thing. But the more you plan for the possible things that could go wrong, the less you have to improv. And that way, when you do improv, the improvs are more meaningful, and you're, you're getting working towards a story you're trying to present and not trying to solve problems with Band-Aids. So that's a big thing. And a lot of people have strengths, and most people, when they're doing film direction, I see, including myself, you think about the camera and the lens and what you're seeing on screen. That's your strength. Think about all the things that you're not strong about when you think of playing, like, audio. Um, that's one that's always forget about. They'll pick a great location. It's beautiful, but there's a factory next door, and there's trucks driving by. Or we didn't know there's gonna be a long, t long team next door doing weed eaters and leaf blowers. Um, so things like that. Or you know, if you if you forgot about you know 
comfort and costume issues and things that you like everyone I think most people will be fine on camera but it's all those other elements so when you're doing your planning and you have your shot list and your and your spreadsheets or whatever tools you're using go through the things that are not the main part of the story which is the things that could go wrong so you, you don't have to worry about that on the, on the set on the day of one final thought too about locations I've I've heard it described as okay so your location where you're filming is the center of a bullseye okay so what happens on the outer rings of that bullseye and how might those things impact the center of your bullseye so if you are filming at a house you might want to go to the neighbors and say hey we're filming next door would you mind not doing your lawnmower until two mm -hmm. yep. further out what's can you control the train tracks probably not is that a good location for you maybe not so think about that bullseye and what are those rings and how it might reverberate out so let's transition from pre-production unless anyone has questions any pre-production questions yes ma'am rain, <laughs> rain delay good question how do you deal with rain delays? Melissa? Well, we have dealt with that. And um, basically, we had to bring everything in and wait it out. But there are some days when you can't do that. And so that's why, I mean, you might, you might have to like keep an eye on the weather and see, OK, this is going to be a fully rainy day. We're going to have to reschedule this. And, and that would just happen. I mean, otherwise, if you've got a big budget or a big crew, they can try to block it a little bit or, you know, but it, it's unlikely. Or you move to another location that's got like an overhead, you know, like a gazebo kind of area or something. I don't know. But you would have to, you would have to think about it ahead. That's where it's best to have a backup plan. We always do that. Like we, we will be like, okay, if the weather's not good, what is plan B? And that's another thing you can do with your crew, with your cast and be like, if this day, it's kind of looking shady on the weather. We're, we don't know what's going to happen. If something goes wrong, are you guys free on this date as a backup date? There are different things you can do like that. But a lot of times with, with the pr product projects that we have here, it is kind of difficult to have another day to get everything together. So it, it is good to have a plan B location, too, in that regard. Yeah, just do, do the best you can to plan for rain. But as long as you're thinking ahead of time, because that's a good point we didn't bring up until just now. Mm -hmm. like, but uh, if you can have a rain day or rain weekend set aside, if this weekend's that bad, that we'll move it to this fall weekend and hope that weekend has good weather. Mm -hmm. I, I've, we've canceled entire productions because it's supposed to have thunderstorm the next day, and it's been a beautiful sunny day. <laughs> yeah. And that hurts so yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so I like to wait to the morning of. But then you, but, but you, if you're paying for crew and you have people, actors, and locations, and all this stuff lined up, it's really hard to make that decision and that we don't have there's, there's no right answer for that because there's so many variables but right. the fact that you're thinking ahead is that's number one you just yeah. that's yeah, yeah. And, and I would probably say is budget wise uh, one thing that you can always add for for productions is just contingency having that in the budget for films but I know for film prize junior that you know budgets may not be as optimal thinking but just like they said you know in the pre-production if you're looking to produce a month out look at the uh, weather forecast and kind of you know guesstimate hey this this that or this is going to rain this day and then backup plans is also a big thing is yeah. pre-production but at the end of the day the best thing you could probably do is just pray yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and hope for the best yeah. or don't it, plan something in april it right, tends to yeah. rain a lot in april but yeah. if you're shooting over the summer you're yeah. pretty safe to just wait out yeah. the storms and if you can't afford to not have a, a weather day like like that don't sh don't plan outdoors yeah unfortunately yeah. if in the it, bigger industry they call it a cover set yeah. so they have it a, a place where if we have to go for cover this is what we're going to do and it is a really critical thing in your pre-production process to maybe consider still filming in the rain if it's not torrential because you have this day you have your cast you have your crew can you adjust your script slightly to integrate it into your story without losing everything you've set up for the day for smaller budgets and smaller teams of people that sometimes is the only way to do it it's just like okay we got to punt with the rain now okay we're going to be singing in the rain and yeah. keep going so that's that's again if you're if you're doing your pre-production right you have thought through a lot of those potentials and you've made a plan for those yes. things great question yes jordan Like, what's the process of getting more people if you're not necessarily already connected? 
Great question. I'm going to reiterate that for those in the back. It's about casting. How do you involve more and recruit more people who might be interested in your project? Who wants I'll, to start? I'll, I'll, I'll start with, Go. I, and it, it's hard, but um, the number one thing that I, I've seen this in, in the film files community with everyone I'm sitting around is it's networking and building a community. Um, you you might have to take some time and start building your network of people you know, participating in film prize productions, film prize junior, going to, you know, even volunteering, you know, as, as a PA or, or get or something like that, just to be on set and to meet people. Um, that's that's a big thing. It's just, then you can ask like, hey, Melissa, we, we, we're looking for an actor for this and she might know somebody or Brent might know somebody. So it's having a, expanding your network of people you know and your circle of contacts, that's, that's a big thing. Because um, if you want it to be your passion, being more involved with that community helps you a lot. So that, that's my number one thought is just knowing people and getting to know people. Yeah, and I mean, if you're just getting started and you haven't built out that networking field yet, I mean, you can just find one person who does have mm -hmm. a lot of connections. And then like if they post something on Facebook or, you know, just kind of do a call out for that for you, they have a larger reach. So it, it would be good to at least just hone in on maybe one person who's well connected connected to the industry here. And there are a lot of Facebook groups like, you know, Streetport Actors, Dallas Actors, yeah. Field, Streetport Film Crew. Find all those like social media sites and Instagram, Facebook, you know, whatever you're using and, and start following and see who's active and see who's involved and see who's doing things. And reach out to the Louisiana Film Prize page. They will actually share a lot of casting calls, crew calls. And they're really good about reaching out to that network. So. And, and my thing is kudos to what you're doing today because you've already started that process. So yeah. just expand <laughs> off of that. I mean, you, you have a room of, I mean, in our area, you, you pretty much have all of the connections here. And I'm not even talking about myself. I'm talking about just the outline. I mean, Greg is over there. So so he could get just into Just ask Greg. Yeah, just ask Greg. Greg. <laughs> Greg, yeah. Just, just text him. I think it's a, it's a great point because this Shreveport and Bossier and Caddo have a great network, but if you're not in this area, there are film offices associated with every parish and every city in the state. So if you were to go on the New Orleans Film Office page, they have a listing of actors and crew that want to work and, and have email addresses you can reach out to. If you were to Google um, local, like, um, Community colleges, colleges. They have got film programs or theater programs, and you can just see that these kids are interested in doing other things, and, and semi-professionals who want just more experience on film are thrilled to work yeah. with student teams. The, little, the theater thing you said, there's, there's several theater groups in town, like Cheaper Little Theater and Beaujolais Arts Council, and um, was it Stage, that Stage Center? Yes, mm -hmm. those the, these are all people who volunteer to act in these productions. They spend months doing that for that, so they might be willing to if they like your script and like you. So that's another place to find people. Who also, they also a lot of them have technical backgrounds too. And every parish has community theater, so every parish has actors that are really interested in expanding their their range. And I was going to say, even even the colleges, uh, Bipsy has a great program. LSU has Susla, Sydney. Um, there are so many, you know, people in those different telecommunication fields that would love to just work on projects um, and kind of build their portfolio. So, yeah, and the Digital Media Institute, yeah, yeah. They, if you're looking for visual effects help, uh, I think they would probably be able to have their students might be might be willing to help out for their own learning and poor purposes, little things like that. I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, the first panel was talking about story, and we have three story makers, storytellers here. As producers, you are making stories. I want to talk a little bit about who you are in the world and what stories you want to tell and why it's important to hear from your voice. Who wants wow. to Melissa, I want you to start. <laughs> why is it important that you have a story to tell and that you're willing to tell it? Wow. Oh, I go it, deep. Is it? Is I go it deep. Important? I go deep. Is it? Absolutely. No, actually, I think it's everyone has a story to tell. So let's let's not make it so personal. I mean, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has their own unique experience and perspective to bring to a project. And so, yeah, I mean, this is a great opportunity to do just that. And for me personally, if I were to get personal, I, I like to take a comedic approach like my friend Jaya over there. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think it's all kind of like we can all get to the core. It's a lot of it's about finding ourselves and, and putting that, you know, into a work of art. Brent. Yes. Um, 
ask that question again because I had so many things going in my head. Sure. I want to make sure. Yeah. What I have to say is going to be different than what you have to say. Right. Why is it important that you are sharing your voice? Yes. Um, sharing my voice. Uh, the first thing, being a creative is just an amazing thing in itself. Um, I had one of my good pastor friends tell me years ago, uh, creating is the closest thing to God for us as human beings is creating. So we are essentially shedding our God to everyone. For me, I love, I just love storytelling and telling other stories. Not, not necessarily my story, but other people's story. Um, and also stories that may not have been told. Um, just, I mean, we've worked on so many different projects as far as short film or full feature film and doc documentaries that really just tell the untold stories. So that's my passion in creating and producing is telling a story that may not be told or something that everyone may not know or touching an audience or a crowd that may not have its uh, have as much visibility so that's that's mine i hope i answered the question good right. answer <laughs> yeah clint well you got me on that one I, i've spent i've spent so much time um trying to tell other people's stories as you know what we do for a living is to tell other people's story whether through marketing or through the film prize that i kind of forget my own voice and i try to put my my style aside and do what's best for the client or the or the filmmaker um so i'm, I'm kind of like man i need to do something now <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, d I do enjoy the creative process and like every year f w w at fairfield we just would make something fun for ourselves and we haven't done it in a couple of years because of all the life events and world history stuff going on but just making something for yourself it does feel good and now i want to do something so yeah <laughs> thank you film You're prize fine. registration <laughs> it's open. Um, so I, I guess too, as producers, how do we bring how do we bring that spirit of creativity and support to our productions? You know, like when you think about bringing a team together, what is important to you when you bring that team? Is it safety? Is it respect? Tell, talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I think first and foremost, as I, I think I mentioned earlier, you want to be able to trust your team. You want to trust that they can come through for you. I can't tell you how many times we've taken a chance and then the person didn't show up or we had to kind of replace them last second. So you kind of want, and that's not saying only work with the people that you're best friends with, but make sure that you look into what their reputation is and if they've come through on things before. Um, I think that's such an important part of securing your process in pre-production and making sure that everything goes smoothly. These repeat that question for me because these questions are awesome. They're not your normally cookie cutter, so I want to make sure I yeah, get yeah, it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a producer, when you're bringing your team together, what things are you hoping to accomplish with that team? Why are you bringing that team together? And what do you hope to give to them? Yes, and I think my answer might be, I'm going to do a kind of weird answer because I think at different points in the process of making the film, I kind of expect certain things. So on the front end, script writing, um, all of that is creativity. Let's bring out the best create creative juices that we can. Pre-production, let's think a little bit more logical. Let's kind of get a little bit more of the logistics down. Let get, let's, let's be creative, but let's kind of hone it in. And let's make sure that we're making sure that the team together is the best. I'm, I'm big on leadership. So in that time, for me, the biggest thing that I can give and want to receive is leadership because I need everyone to work in their specific veins to make this happen. Um, and then in the production end, that's when it really comes down to the technical aspect of everything for, for me, for my leadership style and how I look at production, because look, now we have to nail everything that we've created, that we've logistically planned. Now it's time to technically make sure that it's the best that it needs to be. So that's, that's kind of my process and my, mm -hmm. my thoughts. Clint? Um, what they said. Okay. <laughs> uh, but one thing also to think about is this, for almost everyone that's involved in this, this is not their one time opus and they're, they're done filmmaking forever. This is their future. So always think about personal growth. Like what's the, what's, what, what am I, I going to learn from this production to help me do the next one better? And surrounding yourself with people who are better at you at certain skill sets than you are so you can learn from them and they'll learn from you from your skill sets from you know not only the things that go well but the things that go wrong so always be thinking about yes i'm making this product this is my my passion for this moment but there's going to be the next passion project so making sure that you leave room for yourself to grow and surround yourself with people a team that is passionate about what you're doing but also have the skill sets to help you understand how to do the next one even better than the one you're doing right now you actually were leading me to my next question so young filmmakers are in the audience what 
let's say five skills should they work on and acquire today for their projects? Can I get a piece of paper to write? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what skills should these young filmmakers be acquiring, Brent? Patience. Okay, great. <laughs> That's, I'll start yeah. with that. Start with, okay, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and patience, I, mean, I guess patience and also uh, ability to, to take things in stride because things don't go right all the time. And having the ability to calmly stop and think, of, of, a, of a nice solution instead of getting trying to prevent learning more every every time they'll be less frustrated and more problem solving so the the patient's problem solving problem solving being the biggest one is filmmaking like 101 <laughs> is if like, like a lot of it happens with like people we get from like schools that have been learning filmmaking they learn all the the skills like how to do focus or how to do uh, sound and how to write scripts according to the procedures they were taught but they don't know how to think outside that solution and it could be simple simple as knowing to go to YouTube and finding some 11 year old in Thailand who knows how to do that visual effects better than you can and learn from them so oh. yes <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, adapting is one of the biggest things. I think we've talked about that a few times. You will always have to adapt. If it's a technical problem, which which almost always happens. I mean, it could be something small, or even if it's something in the script that needs to be adjusted because um, something, it just didn't work out. Always be willing to adapt. Yes, and make sure you have good communication with your crew, uh, communication with your cast. Uh, make sure you guys are really talking everything out and being persistent because, you know, there are going to be things that go wrong, but that shouldn't stop you. That shouldn't make you lose the passion for it. If you fail, if your pro if your final product doesn't come to the pat to like the way you wanted it to turn out, let that be inspiration for you to do better the next time to get up and try again. And then, yeah. I mean, have we listed I mean, five? Is, is yeah, that's great. That's good. I'm going to add two. I'm going to add two. Really I'm going to add two. One, procrastination. Work on oh, not yeah. procrastinating. So obviously in that pre-production process phase of your journey, that's enabling you to not procrastinate if you get all that work done ahead of time. So work on procrastinating. And I would say a hard skill that every single filmmaker should work on is sound Oh, oh, oh can, can yes. I talk about sound? I would, Brent, I would love for you oh, to talk about goodness. sound. Oh. Because that's one of those things yeah. that we don't forgive yes. as audience members. Yes. Like, so that's important. the one thing that will elevate any production or really make it hard to participate and really engage in is quality sound. Yes. Um, Brent, uh, take I, me there. Yeah, I love sound. I'm, I'm a musician as well. I've been a musician my entire life. Um, so, and, and I've done Pro Tools classes, produce music as well along with film. Um, I tell people all the time, especially, um, you know, people like you all that are young and may not have all of the equipment that you want, it, it would behoove you to get a little bit of sound equipment and use your camera phone than having the top um, red camera and sound being horrible. Because some, some way our mind works is that if the sound is good, it visually comes out a little bit better. But if the visual is great, but the sound is horrible, you just should have done everything on your phone. So sound is paramount. And now there are so many ways for your phones that you can get a really good lavalier microphone wireless that you can hook to your phone or to your iPad. So please take advantage of sound and focus on sound. I would even say over video. Yeah, yeah we always put our sound equipment up first before you even get lights or cameras out. Just as a, as a mental reminder that this, it's important. I, yeah, that's just one of the biggies. Um, I will give you one final little Easter egg, filmmakers. One of the things that in Film Prize Junior we've done is workshops throughout the year, and we've asked industry professionals to talk about specific things in production and pre-production. And one of the things that I, I've taken away personally is that when you're in your pre-production phase, start thinking about your music and your score even before you start filming. And the reason for that is that it will give you some inspiration, it will set your tone, and it will give you a path. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when, like maybe you hadn't thought of that before, but that was one of those things that I've learned in the Film Prize Junior world, like from the experts in the industries. Start thinking about your score and your music first, even in writing. Yeah. Um, so true. 
Any questions? Brent, you got something? Oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was going back to, to, I was going sure. back to the musician side. Yeah. Um, music is, is super important because it's going to create that mood that you're looking for. Um, I, I have a school of music, so teaching piano lessons um, and all of that. There are certain chords and certain sounds that bring out certain emotions. So that is super important. And the good thing about you guys that are still in middle school or high school, I mean, there's so many musicians around you. So even in your network of friends, you can find somebody that can help out with that. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's you, all you, good. You, I'm, you, yes. You did sound and music and that just video sound and music they all but you're so right i mean that tone is a, is established through sound and through music and it it really can elevate any production yeah. any questions on either pre-production or production that we haven't covered yes jordan come on in To reiterate for those in the back, do you have a checklist for pre-production that you would recommend? And I can tell you that we do on the Film Prize Junior website that we can share those assets with you that, that can help guide you through that. Team, what do you think? He's about to pull oh, Brent's pulling one up. I bet Brent has one ready, but yeah, there's a lot of tools out there you can find that people already created. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel and do your own. It's the same as you, those things you just don't know. So you can go definitely online and find a lot of stuff. You can use the, like the Film Prize Junior website. Um, but yeah, spreadsheets are my best friend, yes. or checklists, whatever your, your, your mental process works best for your brain, but always look at check, 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 did I cover all these things? It's definitely a good idea. Melissa, any thoughts? No, I, I think they, they covered it. I, I do the same thing. I'll get on and look up everything to, just to make sure that I'm covering my bases. And um, you definitely want to talk to your team and make sure that everything's squared away with that too. But there are lists online that I tend to use. And one of the ones, Film Prize has an awesome one. Uh, one of the ones I've used as well, Studio Binder. They have a great... Yes, um, Studio they, Binder's they, great. They have a great list. That, that's why I was pulling out my phone because I... Because productions are so big, you, you have to almost, every time you do another one, kind of just go through and make sure you're checking. And I'm a big checklist person, so. Yeah. And I would also advocate and say have it digitally and also do a printout copy yes. in case yes. something goes wrong on set. You have a, a, a hard copy that you can continue to work from in case yeah. something goes wrong. And if you're not good at checklists, get someone who is on your team, yeah. a script supervisor type. <laughs> What would be on oh, okay. your checklist? So actually, yeah, so I'm just going to pull up this one. So, And, of course, this you kind of have to adapt it also to what you're looking to do. So the first thing is, is of course, kind of kind of getting, after you get the script and the writing, go ahead and get the budget and the schedule. And even for Film Prize Junior, we'll say resources because we know budget always kind of sounds straight up money. But resources, that's kind of a better word to use for budget. Look at all the resources that you'll need um, to, to get that to happen. After that, you want to go ahead and get your team together. Go ahead. Who do you want to be the director? Who do you want to be the producer? What about the DP, the sound person? Get the, get all of those lists of people. And that list can go on and on depending on how big or small your production crew is. Um, and then after that, um, and, and then the good thing about this workflow, it it's kind of different for everybody. You pick what's best for you, but go ahead and do some more creative planning after that standpoint. Creative planning, and I'm just going to go through it. Um, after that, relook at your resources and schedule, hone in on that. Then go ahead and secure your rental, rentals, your props, your permits, your locations. Talk to all of those people that we talked about before at the different buildings that you may need to um, do for locations. Um, and then at um, some point in that, make sure you get the crew that you, as far as the talent. So you, you got the crew, but go ahead once your, your crew meets, get the talent that you need, and then start rehearsing and do your final preparation. So that's, and that's, like I said, that's just one way. It's so many different ways to do it. One of the big things, Jordan, I think that you're really kind of honing in, in on is the assistant director is the person who takes the script and breaks it apart and makes a schedule. So there's going to be that somebody on you, whoever it is, to help flesh out that schedule for you and with that schedule then comes the resources like okay are we gonna get a crane for this shot and how and when and where is that gonna happen so you take that script that's your template and what you need comes from that and then all the resources queue up but there's specific people in charge of generally depending on the scale of your production who are in charge of 
outlining those resources and what you need. Yeah. And, you're gonna, and you're going to start with one checklist, and then you're going to make your own eventually, because as you go through your script writing, your storyboarding, your rehearsals, you're going to be writing down the different things that have to be done along the way. So you need, you, it's going to evolve with your yeah. production, and it'll be individualized for each production, because each one is different. Right. We have time for one more question. Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Some of the best opportunities to create, where do you find them? So like in your community, right. perhaps? Or around the state, or I mean, how do you, as, as these young people are maybe wanting to do this as a career, how do they find opportunities to create? Where do they find more resources, do they find more resources and get their foot in the door into um, other opportunities? You, you, you want to do it? No, 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 no. I've Paper, rock, scissors. Or we're, we're no, no. Clint, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll moderate. Oh, yeah. Clint, let's start with you, and then Brent, you can come after. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll go back to the networking thing for sure, but I think it, it's a matter of having the initiative and being proactive and reaching out. You know, if, if you're introverted or shy, you have to fight through that. And like I said, find all the social media sites and all the websites you can and start absorbing information of what is available. And then go out and participate, whether it's like a theater production or a film prize junior or for the main film prize. If you see some, a, a call for ca actors, go be an actor, volunteer, and be on set. I mean, I, snu I, I snuck on. I, got, I, I, I told people I was a grip. I got hired to work on a CMT production just so I could see what a real, a real production looked like with all the equipment, all the toys they could have with, when you have unlimited money, just so I could see how they did it for real. So we've always been trying to do it as a uh, on a shoestring so just getting out there and reaching out you, it's, just, it's not going to come to you I, I can promise you that yeah i mean events like this this is the perfect start you're going to find like-minded people the louisiana film prize in general that happens in october or end of september every year um that's a great place to go and just meet people and of course the casting calls for those like we were saying i mean even just going and being an extra on set you can sit there it's fully relaxed, maybe you're sitting at a table with a cup of coffee, but you're watching everything happen, you're talking to new people, and you're just being a part of it. That's how you can meet people who are then going to be able to team up with you, and then you can kind of get together, talk ideas, and get that inspiration from other like-minded people. Yeah. It's a fun, free education. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was just going to go in on that. Everyone likes to have someone that can just, hey, can you pick that up for me, or can you go get coffee? be that person and build that relation and then relationships are big as well so once you say hey look I'll come volunteer build a relationship now don't bug them too much whoever that may be but build that relationship volunteer uh, PA whatever you can do just to get your foot in the, in, in the door and it'll pay off dividends it'd be like Clint, remember that one time I volunteered for two days to be your PA it's your turn to pay back. <laughs> I'm like, okay, damn. it. <laughs> and persistence, I mean, it's going to take time as well. I mean, you may volunteer on a huge movie set. That doesn't mean that you'll be working that, you know, actually working that set next month or even next year. So it's going to take, it takes time, but um, volunteer. Yeah. I would say do that bullseye philosophy again. Start with your backyard. What's in your backyard? <laughs> do you know every community theater in your backyard? No? Get on the internet and figure it out. Who's there? Then go a little bit further. Who's in the parish? Who's in the city next door? What are they doing? Go a little bit further and just build out to the scale at which you're comfortable. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to add a quick comment. When you're looking for resources like uh, actors and things like that, don't forget to uh, find acting classes in your area Ooh. because acting oh, studios yeah. like locally, we have North Dakota Acting Studio. Speaking from experience, there's no one hungrier than someone in an acting class looking for work. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And even acting studios are a great resource because if you're in production and you don't want to act at all, you can ask, hey, do you mind if I come in and film your class? What is that going to do? It's going to get you to hear dialogue. It's going to see how they work with actors that maybe you begin to figure out how to work with actors. And maybe you were allowed to bring your camera into that studio to frame some shots and think about your skills in a way that you hadn't conceived of. Thank you so much from our panelists. So Melissa Munns, Brent Latin, Clint McCommon, feel free to reach out to them after uh, our panel. Again, thank you to our sponsors, the Noel Foundation, uh, Linda Goldsberry, the Phillips Kallenberg Investments, uh, the Monteleone Family Foundation. I could go on and on. Please, you'll see their names and their signs everywhere. And thank them if you know them.